dear student warm welcome to nptel phase 2 program video course on geosynthetics engineering in theory and practice my name is professor j n mandal department of civil engineering indian institute of technology bombay mumbai india the name of the course geosynthetics engineering in theory and practice this is module number 12 lecture number 57 design of geosynthetics for landfill now i focus the recap of the previous lecture geosynthetics clay liner as composite liner and then lss model now i will address the advantage of the lss model the developed software is very user friendly it give the full detail result as compared to the help model. It not only gives the result, but also analyze the result and recommend it as the further step to modify the design. Greater economy can be achieved with fewer calculation. It speed up the calculation work for the long equation and has the advantage of making no mistake in solving the rigorous equation. With this program, the parametric study can be done very effectively. It can be used professionally for analyzing and designing the landfill component. Various design chart can be developed with this software and it will be very useful in actual field side. Now, I will discuss landfill settlement. Of course, we have used that kind of the software in, in the landfill problem. Now, the landfill settlement is a problem. The settlement calculation for municipal solid waste is not easy using consolidation test because it is a heterogeneous material. It is very difficult to calculate the initial void ratio of the municipal solid waste. Therefore, primary compression index CC cannot be determined accurately. In practice, modified compression index CC dash can be considered for design purpose with the value lies between 0 0.17 and 0 0.36. Similarly, the secondary compression index that is C alpha can be modified to C alpha dash with value lies between 0 0.03 and 0 0.1. Sauer 1973 proposed the following equation for calculating the settlement of the solid waste that is primary settlement of the solid waste SP is equal to CC into H0 delta 1 plus C0 log P0 plus delta P by P0 is equal to cc dash into a0 log p by p0 where e0 is equal to initial void ratio of the waste material a0 is equal to initial thickness of the waste material and cc dash that is modified compression index which lies between 0 0.17 to 0 0.30 and p0 the existing pressure at the mid depth of the waste layer and delta p increment of overburden pressure so, total overburden pressure P is equal to P0 plus delta P. Now, secondary settlement of the solid waste that SS, SS is equal to C alpha dash into H0 log T2 by T1. C alpha dash is equal to initial secondary compression index that is 0 0.03 to 0 0.1. H0 is initial thickness of the waste material and T i is the beginning time of the secondary consolidation and T2 ending time of the secondary consolidation. So, total settlement S will be equal to SP plus SS. Now, I am giving one example one. Let us say gamma waste that is unit weight of solid waste is 12 kiloton per meter cube. P0 the existing pressure on the waste is equal to 50 kiloton per meter square. C, C dash that is modified primary compression index is equal to 0 0.06 and T1 beginning time of the secondary consolidation is equal to 1 month. 
C alpha dash initial secondary compression index that is 0 0.25. So, calculate the total settlement at the end of 6 month and solid waste filling data are given below. So, this is the solid waste filling data time that is in month, 1 month, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 month. So, height of the waste in the first month that is H 0 1 is equal to 4 meter, second month H 0 2 is equal to 6 meter and the third month H 0 3 is equal to 5 meter, four month H 0 4 is equal to 7 meter and height of the waste H 0 at 5 month is equal to 3 meter and height of the waste as 6 month is equal to 4 meter. So, total height of the waste 4 plus 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 4 is 29 meter. So, this is the first layer, this is the second layer, this third layer, fourth layer, fifth layer and sixth layer. So, this way solid waste is filling data is shown. Now, is the solution. So, you have to calculate the waste depth at the middle of each layer. So, this is the H 1 is 0.5 into 4 that means middle of this layer. So, 0.5 into 4 plus 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 4. So, this will be 0.5 into 4 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 4 is 27 meter. Now, H 2 will be equal to that is H 2 here that means middle of this layer that means 0.5 into 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 4. So, that is why 0.5 into 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 4 is 22 meter. Similarly, H 3 H 3 is equal to 0.5 into 5 that means H 3 is equal to 0.5 into 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 4. So, 0.5 into 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 4 is 16.5 meter. H 4 is 0 0.5 into 7. So, H 4 is 0 0.5 into 7 plus 3 plus 4. So, 0 0.5 into 7 plus 3 plus 4 is 10.5. So, H 5 is here 0 0.5 into 3 plus 4. So, 0 0.5 into 3 plus 4 5.5 5 meter. So, H 6 is this layer that is 4 into 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 into 4 is 2 meter. So, you calculate the what will be the waste depth at the middle of each layer. Now, we calculate the initial pressure at the middle of each layer. So, let us say initial pressure at the each layer P 0 1 will be the half into H 0 1 into gamma waste. So, you know half means 0 0.5 and H 0 1 that is 4. So, this is 4 H 0 1 4 4 into waste density is given 12. So, for P 0 1 is equal to 25 kilo Newton per meter square P 0 2 is half into this is 802 half into 6 into 12 because this depth is 6 this is 6. So, 6 into 12 that is 36 kilonewton per meter. Similarly, for P 0 3 half into 5 into 12 is 30 kilonewton per meter square and P 0 4 will half into 7 into 12 is 42 kilonewton per meter square and P 0 5 is 0.5 into 3 into 12 18 kilo Newton per meter square and P 0 6 is 0.5 into 4 into 12 is 24 kilo Newton per meter square. So, you have calculated the initial pressure at the middle of each layer. Next calculate the pressure at the middle of each layer. So, we know P is equal to gamma waste into H. So, what is P 1? The gamma waste is 12 and H you calculated first layer is the here H 1 is 27. So, so P 1 is equal to 12 into 27 324 kilo Newton per meter square. P 2 is equal to gamma waste 12 and then H will be 20, 22 this is 22 H 2 is 22. So, this is 22 12 into 22 264 kilo Newton per meter square P 3 will be 12 into 16.5. So, this is 16.5 H 3, 
So, this is 198 kN per meter square P 4 is equal to 12 into 10 to 10.5 that is 10.5 H 4. So, this is 126 kN per meter square P 5 12 into 5.5. So, this is 5.5 12 into 5.5 66 kN per meter and P 6 12 into 2 24 kN per meter this is 2. So, 22 kilonewton per meter. So, this way you can calculate the pressure at the middle of each layer. Now, time period of secondary settlement for each layer that is T of 2. So, here is the construction and this axis is the time. So, placement of the first block that means, displacement time of the bottom block from here to here and the placement time of the top block from here to here. And this is for one month when you are dumping this solid waste. So, this from here to here is one month. So, time period for the secondary settlement for each layer is T 2 will be equal to 0.5 plus placement time of the top block that what will be the placement time for the top block minus minus the placement time of the bottom block. So, initially you have to dump that for a half of the month that is 0.5. So, placement of the top block minus placement of the bottom block. So, that will give what will be the period for secondary settlement for each layer. Now, here T 2 1 is equal to 0.5 plus placement of the top block that means 6 minus 1. So, 6 minus 1 will be 5.5 month. This for 1 month like that 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, T 2 2 will be 0.5 plus 6 minus 2 that is 4.5 month. Then T 2 3 0.5 plus 6 minus 3 that is 3.5 month. T 2 4 0.5 plus 6 minus 4 2.5 month. T 2 5 0.5 plus 6 minus 5 is 1.5 month. So, T 2 6 is 0.5 plus 6 minus 6 is equal to 0 0.5 month which is less than T 1 is equal to 1 month. So, next you have to calculate the settlement of the each layer. So, this is layer 1, you have to calculate what will be the primary settlement, what will be the secondary settlement. So, primary settlement you know the equation S p 1 is equal to C c into H that this is the thickness is 4. So, this is 0.25 C c into H is 4 into log and P 0 plus delta P by P 0. That means, this 324 you are having from here this is 324. So, this is 324 and this is 24 that is P 0 plus delta P by P 0 324 divided by 24. So, you are calculating 324 by 24. So, primary settlement S P 1 is equal to 1.13 meter and this is the secondary settlement S S 1 is this is the C alpha dash that is 0 0.06 and this height is 4 and log of 5.5 divided by 1. So, this is for the secondary settlement. So, this you can also have it from here that is 5.5. So, 5.5 divided by 1. Okay, that you can have that T 2 by T 1. This is for 1 month and this start from the 5.5 month. So, T 2 by T 1 this is T 1 and this at a point T 2. So, 5.5 divided by 1. So, this will be a 5.5 divided by 1. So, this will give 0 0.06 into 4 into 0 0.74 is 0 0.178 meter. So, for the layer 1 total settlement S 1 will be equal to S P 1 plus S S 1 is equal to 1.13 plus 0 0.178 1.31 meter. Similarly, for layer 2 SP2, 
that is 0 0.25 the layer thickness 6 into log of 264 by 36 that is 264 this is 264 264 by this 36 so this will give 1.298 meter similarly the secondary settlement ss2 0 0.06 into 6 into log of 4.5 by 1 this is 4 point t2 is 4.5 and this t1 is 1 because t2 by t1 equation so this will give you the 0 0.235 meter so s2 will be equal to sp2 plus ss2 that is 1.298 meter plus 0 0.235 meter is equal to 1.53 meter. Similarly, for the layer 3 that S P 3 0 0.25 into 5 into log 198 by 30 is 1.024 meter and S S 3 secondary settlement 0 0.065 into log of 3.5 by 1 that is 0 0.163 meter. That means, in layer 3 S 3 will be equal to S P 3 plus S S 3 that is 1.024 plus 0 0.163 is equal to 1.19 meter. In layer 4 that is S P 4 primary consolidation settlement 0 0.25 into 7 into log 126 by 42 is equal to 0 0.835 meter and for secondary settlement S S 4 0 0.06 into 7 into log of 2.5 by 1 so 0 0.167. So, in layer 4 S 4 is equal to S P 4 plus S S 4 is equal to 0 0.835 plus 0 0.167 is equal to 1 meter. Now, layer 5 S P 3 0 0.25 into 3 into log of 66 by 18 that is 0 0.42 meter and S S 5 is 0 0.06 into 3 into log of 1.5 by 1 that is 0 0.032 meter. So, S of 5 will be equal to S P 5 plus S S 5 is equal to 0 0.42 plus 0 0.032 is 0 0.45 meter. And layer 6 as there is no extra overburden pressure over the layer 6, so it will not settle. So, you can say that S 6 will be equal to 0. So, you have to calculate what will the total settlement at the end of the 6 month that is S total will be equal to S 1 plus S 2 plus S 3 plus S 4 plus S 5 plus S 6. So, this is 1.31 plus 1.53 plus 1.19 plus 1.0 plus 0 0.45 plus 0. So, total settlement will be 5.49 meter. So, percentage of the settlement what is S total that is 5.49 and you know that what will be the A 0 that is total is 29. So, into 100. So, into 100. So, percentage of settlement will be 18.92 percentage. So, this now this example 2 the thickness of the each waste block A 0 is about 10 meter and gamma waste is the unit weight of the solid waste 12 kilo newton per meter cube P 0 is initial pressure on each waste block that is half into A 0 into gamma waste that is half into H of 0 because each waste is 10. 10 into gamma waste is 12. So, is equal to 60 kilo newton per meter square. So, P 0 initial pressure of each waste box 60 kilo newton per meter square. C C dash that is modified primary compression index 0 0.25. T 1 is the beginning time of the secondary consolidation is 1 month and C alpha dash initial secondary compression index is equal to 0 0.06. So, filling time for each waste block T is 1 month. So, placing of the waste block is shown in the figure below. So, this is the landfill waste material where you have to dump and you have to calculate what will be the increment of the filling space due to the solid waste settlement. So, here I am just showing it here. This is the landfill and this length is 5 
0 4 meter and this slope 1 vertical to horizontal this is 80 meter. So, this also 80 meter. So, this total length will be 504 plus 80 plus 80 664 meter. And because this is a 2 into 1 slope, so this is 40 meter. And here is the slope 1 vertical to 2.72 horizontal. And this height is about 100 meter. So, that means this all the 10 meter, 10 meter of each layer. So, this is 10 meter, 10 meter, 10 meter like this for each layer. This also 10 meter and here the slope is 1 vertical and 6 horizontal and this distance is 120 meter. So, here is the point A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and this landfill you have to divide it that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 like this. So, you are dumping 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. So, we have to calculate the increment of the filling space due to the solid waste settlement. So, this is the solution, the settlement, we want to determine the settlement at this point, this B point, B here. So, we know the equation for primary settlement S P is equal to that C C dash into H 0 divided by 1 plus C 0 into log of P 0 plus delta P by P 0 or C C dash is equal to H 0 into log P by P 0. Now, you have to calculate the what should be the waste depth at the middle of each layer. So, you are considering this settlement at this point B we want to calculate. So, this is the one. So, H 1 will be equal to at the middle of each layer. So, this will be the 0.5 into 10 H 1 this 0.5 into 10 this plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that means there is 6 layer and each is 10 meter that means 6 into 10. So, H 1 will be equal to 0 0.5 into 10 plus 6 into 10 that means total 65 meter. For H 1 the waste depth at the middle of this layer is 65 meter. Similarly, H 2. So, H 2 will be equal to 0 0.5 into 10 plus there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 into 10 that is 50. So, 0 0.5 into 10 plus 50 is 55 meter for H 2. For H 3 0.5 into 10 that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 into 10, then 40, that means 45 meter. For H 4 is 0.5 into 10, that means 5, 1, 2, 3, 3 into 10, 30. So, 5 plus 35 is 35 meter. Similarly, H, H 5 is 0.5 into 10 is 5 plus 1, 2, 2 into 10, that means 20, 20 plus 5 is 25 meter. Similarly, A 6 is 0 0.5 into 10 and this is 1 layer that means 1 into 10. So, it will give A 6 15 meter. What is A 7 is 0 0.5 into 10. So, it will be the 5 meter. So, you can 
calculate the waste depth at the middle of each layer for this B point. We want to calculate settlement at the point B. So, here is calculation is shown. Now, total overburden pressure at the mid level of each waste layer that is P is equal to P 0 plus delta P. So, we know P is equal to gamma waste into H. So, what will be the value of P 1? So, gamma waste is constant 12 and height for P 1 is 65. So, here we find H 1 that is 65. So, P 1 will be equal to 12 into height 65 780 kilo newton per meter square. So, P 2 12 into 55. So, here calculated 55 for H 2. So, it will be the 12 into 55 660 kilo newton per meter square. For P 3 12 into this is 45. So, 12 into 45 450 kilo newton per meter square. P 4 12 into this is 35. So, 12 into 35 420 kilo newton per meter square. P 5 12 into 25 that means this 25 that means 12 into 25 300 kilo newton per meter square. Now, P 6 12 into 15. So, it is 15 12 into 15 is 180 kilo newton per meter square. P 7 12 into 5 this is 5. So, this is 60 kilo newton per meter square. So, total overburden pressure at the mid level of each waste layer we have calculated and it will be shown here. Now, primary settlement that is S p. So, S p will be equal to C c dash H 0 log p by P 0. For primary settlement S p is equal to you know the equation this equation C c dash H 0 this is C c dash H 0 0.25 H 0 is equal to 10 into log of P by P 0. P 0 is equal to 60 and P is 780, this is 780 and this is P 0 60. So, this is 780 by 60 plus log of this is 660, 660 by 60, then plus log of 540. So, log of 540 by 60 plus log of 420, so 420 by 60 plus log of 300, 300 by 60 plus log of 180. So, 180 by 60, then plus log of this is 60. So, log of 60 by 60. So, this will give that what will the primary settlement SP will be 12.83 meter. So, we have calculated what is primary settlement. Now, we have to calculate the secondary settlement. So, for the secondary settlement we know the equation S s is equal to C alpha dash H 0 log T 2 by T 1. Now, period of the secondary settlement of each layer is T 2. So, T 2 will be equal to 0 0.5 plus placement of the time of the top block minus placement of the time of the bottom block. So, from this system we can calculate T T, T 2 1 is 0 0.5 plus 7 minus 1 that is placement of the time of the top block that is 7 minus 1 is 6.5 month. The next T T 2 is equal to 0 0.5 plus 7 minus 2 is 5.5 month. Then T 2 3 is 0 0.5 plus 7 minus 3 is 4.5 month. Then T 2 4 0 0.5 plus 7 minus 4 is equal to 3.5 month and T 2 5 is 0 0.5 plus 7 minus 5 is 2.5 month and T 2 6 0 0.5 plus 7 minus 6 is 1.5 month. So, here T 2 7 is equal to 0 0.5 7 minus 7 is equal to 0 0.5 month. So, here T 1 less than 1 month. So, from this equation you can calculate that what should be the T 2 1, T 2 1 etcetera you have find out here. So, from that equation you can also calculate this secondary settlement. 
that means secondary settlement will be equal to c alpha i 0 0.06 given h 0 is equal to 10, this is log of t 2 by t 1. So, this is t 2 6.5 and t 1 is minimum equal to 1 month. So, this is 6.5 by 1 plus log of log of this is 5.5 by 1 plus log of 4.5 by 1, that is log of 4.5 by 1 plus log of this is 3.5 by 1 plus log of 2.5 by 1 plus log of 1.5 by 1 here. So, you will have the secondary settlement S s is 0 0.6 into 3.325 is 1.995 meter. So, total settlement at the point B is S is equal to primary settlement S p plus secondary settlement S s is equal to 12.83 plus 1.995 that means 14.822 meter. Now, complete the calculation of the settlement at each point and can be determined by the same process. So, you can calculate it for each cases. I am just showing you here the solid weight depth over the mid level of the each wave. This is the detailed calculation here. This is you can layer H7, H6, H5, H4, H3, H2, H1 and this the point B where we have calculated and this height is, 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 is equal to that is 5 meter, then it is that 15, 25, 35, 45, 55 and 65. So, this we have shown that what is the height. So, similarly you can calculate for the C, D, E, F, G and H. I am showing you here that I show you only for the B that is H 7, H 6, H that 5, H 4, H 3, H 2, and H 1. And you know that what will be the height for this? This is 6, then the 15, then the 25, 36, 45, uh, 45, then you can have 55 and then 65. Similarly, you have to calculate for this layer at this point C, C point. So, what is the layer in the C point? That is your 17, H 17, H 16, H 15, H that 14, H 13, H 12, then E can H that 12, then E can look that which one is the rest on the, this is the vertical line, then left portion which is the maximum. So, you can say this is H 4 and then it is that H 3, then the H 2 and then the H 1 for this point that C point. So, similarly for the C point you have to calculate that what will be the height at the mid level of each waist. Similarly, you have to calculate for the D. Always keep this is the vertical line and then take the left hand portion okay, which is the maximum. So, similarly for the D point you can have that H 31, H 30, then H 20, 9 and then H 20, H, H 20, this is the 7, H 26 and then the H 25, then H 24 and then H of 13 and then you are having the H 12, then H 11, H 10, H 9 and H 8 for this D. Similarly, for E, H 46, H 45, H 44, H 43, H 40 of 2 and then H of 27 which is maximum here 27, H 27, then H 26, 
then H24, then H23, so then H22, then H21, and then H20, and then H19, and then H, uh, H9, and then H8. So, this is the point for E. Similarly, E can calculate for the F point and the G point and the H point and this one point. So, you know that each layer and where it is this located this point. So, accordingly you can also calculate that what should be the height of this each layer that is solid waste depth H over the mid level of each waste layer. So, you can calculate like this. So, here will be the maximum layer here almost like a symmetry. So, then this, this, this like this, like similarly like on the other side of the end field. So, total overburden pressure here acting at the mid level of each waste. So, we have shown for the B and this is the layer that is P 7, the what will be the overburden pressure P 7, P 6, P 5, P 4, P 3, P 2 and P of 1. So, you can show that what should be the overburden pressure P 7 is pressure is 60 kilo Pascal, P 6 180 kilo Pascal, P 5 300 kilo Pascal, P 4 420 kilo Pascal, P 3 540 kilo Pascal and P 2 660 kilo Pascal and P 1 780 kilo Pascal. So, this we have also shown, this also, this part also we have shown in calculation that what will be the overburden pressure acting at the mid level of this point B point. So, similarly you know this layer for C point, you know the layer and then you can calculate what will be the pressure. So, these are the pressure for P 17 60, P uh, uh, 16 180 kilo Pascal, P 15 300 kilo Pascal, P 14 420 kilo Pascal, P 13 540 kilo Pascal, P 12 660 kilo Pascal, P 4 780 kilo Pascal. P 3 900 kilo Pascal, P 2 1020 kilo Pascal and P 1 1140 kilo Pascal for this C. So, similarly for D, E, F, G, H. So, E can calculate the what will be the overburden pressure. Here I show for this B for P 7, P 6, P 5, P 4, P 3, P 2, P 1. Similarly for this pressure C also you can calculate that is P 17, P 16, P 15, P 14, then P 13, P 12 and this is P 4 and then P 11, um, uh, P 4 then uh, your P 3, then P 2 and the P 1. So, you can calculate that what will be the pressure at the point C. Similarly, for the pressure at the point D, at the point E, at the point F, at the point G, at the point H. So, E can calculate what will be the total overburden pressure acting at the mid level of each waste. So, this the secondary settlement time period T 2 month of each waste layer. Similarly, for secondary settlement again for the B, uh, this is the layer 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and at this point B that what is T 2 month that is for the seventh layer 0 0.5 and for the 6 1.5 for 5 layer 2.5 and 4 layer 3.5 and 3 layer 4.5 and 2 layer 5.5 1 layer 6.5. Similarly, you have to calculate the secondary settlement time period for the point C and the layer 17, 6, the 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 4, 3, 2, 1 and this is the time that is the 
T 2 what is required. So, similarly you can calculate for the secondary settlement for the D E F G H that means, for the secondary settlement as I show you that you have find out you have shown for the B similarly secondary settlement for the C secondary settlement for the D and then E F G H and I. So, you can calculate the secondary settlement. Now, that summary of the settlement of each point that means, you have the point A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So, this is the point A, B, C, D, E, F, I. So, primary settlement is at the point A is 0 and B primary settlement for the point B is 12.83, C is 22.04 and D is 35.82, E is 39.48. F is 35.82 and G is 22.04, H is 12.83 and I is 0. So, secondary settlement similarly for the A 0, B 1.995 and C 4.327 meter and D is 7.275 meter and E is 9.484 meter and F is 7.823 meter and G 4. 154 meter and H 1.995 meter and I is 0. So, total settlement will be the primary settlement plus secondary settlement. So, this summation for the B 14.822 meter and for the C 26.367 meter, for D 43.10 meter, for E 48.96 meter, for F 43.646 meter, for G 26.194 meter and for H 14.822 meter. So, you know what will be the total settlement. Now, settlement for the west landfill. So, you know that all this settlement value what will be the total settlement. So, total settlement is known to you. Now, settlement of the west landfill how far is settled? So, here you can see this dotted line here then how far it has been settled. Okay. So, this we have to find out. So, initially it was here this farm line it was here and due to the settlement of the west and this landfill settlement you can see is dotted line here. So, we have to calculate that what should be the initial cross section volume of the landfill. So, initial cross section volume of the landfill and then after that what will be the settled cross section volume of the landfill. So, here I am showing it here again that what should be the initial volume of this landfill. So, volume V 0 if you say. So, this is the A D, this is the area of let us say the area of D E F, this area like a triangle. So, this volume will be the area of D E F plus area of A D F and I like this plus this A I J K like this. So, we have to determine initial cross sectional volume of the landfill that is V 0 meter cube per meter. That means, this area this area will be 0.5 and each is 10 10 meter is. So, 0.5 into 10 into this distance is 120. So, 0.5 into 10 into 120 okay. plus now this is 120 and this this to this is 664. So, this is 664 it is like a trapezoid A D F I. So, this is 120 this is 664 this is 664. So, it will be 0 0.5 into 
into 120 plus 664 into there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 into 10, this site is 10 into 10, that means 100. So, this area A D F I, this area will be half into 120 plus 664 into 10 into 10, that means 100 plus this part. That means, this is half into, this is 664 and this distance is 504, that means A I J K. So, this is 664, this is 664 and this is 504. So, half into 664 plus 504 into 1, 2, 3, 4, that means 4 into 10, 40. So, if you calculate, you can have the initial cross section volume of the landfill that is V0 meter cube per second is 63160 meter cube per meter. Now, the what will be the settled cross section volume of the landfill that is let us say delta V. So, that delta V we have to calculate. So, this is the dotted line how much it has been settlement. Now, here the settlement this area is A, B and this is B dash. So, this triangle A, B and B dash. So, what will be the area of A, B, B dash plus next B, B dash, C dash, C. Next C, C dash, D dash, D. Next D, D dash, E, F. Next E, E dash, F dash, F. Next F, F dash, G dash G, then G, G dash H dash H, like H, H dash and I. So, this area are to determine. So, that means this area will be equal to half into B of B dash, this is B of B dash. Now, this B of B dash at the point B of B dash, your settlement is 14.822. So, you know this 14.822, which we have calculated at this B as 14.822. Similarly, C, D, etc. is given here. So, we know that that means this area will be 0 0.5 into 0 plus B B dash, that means B B dash will be equal to 14.822. So, 0.5 into 14.822 plus this that means B B dash and C dash and C that is B B dash that means this area B B dash plus C dash C that means this will be equal to this is 14.822 plus this C point we know that 26 point here C point 26 point 367. So, this will be the 26 point 367. Okay? So, this point 26 point 367 plus this area C C dash D dash D. So, this area C C dash again 26 point 376 and D D dash is 43 point 1 0. So, here you can see 43 point at the point D 43 point 1 0. So, you are having 43 point 1 0 plus similarly you can calculate 40 the next you can calculate this area 43 point 1 0 plus 48 point 96 plus 48 point 96 plus 43 point 646 plus 43 point 646 plus 26 point 194 plus 26 point 194 plus 14 point 822 plus 14.822 plus 0 into that here this to this is 664 and this divided by 8 because there are 8. Okay? You can say count that you can have this 8 value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here actually you can have from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 
and this 8 value. So, you can have that 8 that means, this 664 divided by the 8. So, this will give you what will be the total area and 664 by 8 is common. 664 by 8 is common. So, you can obtain that settled cross section volume of the landfill delta P is equal to 18086.7 meter cube per meter. So, each case you are to calculate what should be the area. So, that area you should calculate. So, when you are calculating this this area that means, you know that this area in each case you have to calculate this area. That means, you, you know that this is like a like a trapezoid and you know that what will be the number of the layer and then you can calculate. Here this 664 by 8 is the common for all. So, you can obtain that settlement cross sectional this volume of the landfill delta P 18086.7 meter cube per meter. Hence, volume gain due to the waste settlement 18086.7 divided by 631160 into 100. That means, you know that this is that initial cross section volume into 100 is 29 percentage. So, piggyback landfill system. This is the, the concept of this vertical extension or the piggyback is a landfill kind of the system when you the construction of the landfill is over even then if you wanted to construct the another new landfill on the top of the existing landfill and that is called the piggyback landfill system. And sometimes it is necessary when there is no place and you wanted to to increase in the height of the landfill and then you can adopt this piggyback system or piggyback landfill system. So, total settlement of the existing landfill must be anticipated and also that estimate this accordingly. You also there is a possibility for the differential settlement. So, that is why it is required very high strength geogrid or geotextile material for the differential settlement or you can provide also the cellular reinforcement or the geocell kind to reduce the differential settlement. Also, waste placement in the new landfill must be carefully provided because it required for the stage distribution on the existing landfill. Because there is a possibility for any gas which methane gas what is can be provide and that methane gas from the coming out from the existing landfill to the new landfill what is called the piggyback land, landfill system. Also, you have to provide proper kind of the relief of the gas along the slope of the piggyback landfill system. So, the construction of the new landfill about the existing landfill is called piggybacking. Calculate the vertical stress sigma j due to localized subsidency or the differential settlement of the new landfill over the existing landfill. Let us say the vertical stress on the reinforcement layer is sigma z. So, sigma z is equal to 2 into gamma of average into r this is Tarjigi and March on 1930 gamma average is equal to average unit weight material about the settlement area r is equal to radius of differential settlement in the old landfill. So, to support the differential settlement, the required geogrid strength can be written as T required sigma z r into epsilon, epsilon is equal to strain function that is 0.97 at 5 percent strain. So, we are giving one example in a piggyback landfill, height of the landfill is 25 meter, differential settlement in an old landfill of radius r is equal to 1 meter, unit weight of the waste compacted material 11 kilonewton per meter cube ultimate why the tensile strength of the geogrid is 130 kilonewton per meter and this reduction factor 4.5 assume epsilon is, is uh, omega is equal to 0 0.62 calculate the factor of safety. This is the solution sigma z will be equal to 2 
gamma average into r that means 2 into 11 into 1 that means 22 kilo Newton per meter square and epsilon is equal to 0 0.62 at 10 percent strain. So, T required is equal to sigma z r into r into omega that is 22 into 1 into 0 0.62 that is 13.64 kilo Newton per meter. T allowable is equal to T ultimate by reduction factor and 130 by 4.5 is equal to 28.88 kilo Newton per meter. So, factor of safety will be equal to T allowable by T required that is 28.8 divided by 13.64 is 2.11. So, it is the ok. So, this is one you can say that one beautiful the landfill. So, this when you talk about the landfill there is also some non-technical consideration. That means, there is a social problem, there is a political problem and there is a legal problems. Also that is Koenard mentioned there is in Limbi because sometimes you have to face a lot of difficulty to construct the landfill on the site. So, NIMBY that means not in my backyard, person say no not in my backyard and when it is a most hazardous kind of the landfill system, then, then they say that like a NIM toe that means not in my terms of the office. So, this kind of the problem when you wanted to construct a landfill on the project site. Also apart from that you require that proper kind of the environmental and the human health which can the issue that cannot be properly addressed and that also may create something legal problem in the future. So, what we have covered that design of the landfill. So, you need the proper kind of the design and you have to be follow up that what kind of the geo membrane geosynthetic clay liner or the geonet should adopt. So, this software LSS model will be the very much useful for the design and the construction of the landfill system. With this I just finish my lecture today. Uh, let us hear from you any question. Thank you for listening.